who knows that sometimes there's, I, I honestly believe all, all sickness is rooted in the fall of man. I'm just for the record. I, I believe all sickness is, is rooted in the fall of man, and I believe the source of it is certainly not God. Uh, if I fall down a stair and break my leg, I don't believe that's, quote, demonic. It's an accident, it's injury. You tear something in your body. You just, uh, I, I believe there's some things that have the, the smell of uh, rooted in infirmity and spirit induced all over it, certain diseases and sicknesses. This one was just obviously demonic. It was, it was coming through assignments. There was witches, there was stuff going on at the time. So the Lord showed me. He actually used the word voodoo in my prayer time. And uh, that shouldn't freak us out. It's just... It's this witchcraft, witchcraft. It's not a big deal, but that's the word he used. Uh, When I know something is demonically rooted like that, I have no, you'll you'll not. Breaking your leg is one thing. I'm still in a place believing God's going to mend my bone. I'm a pretty hard guy to get to a doctor. I'm just being honest. I'm not against doctors. (laughs) I'm just all about faith, and I want to see Jesus so much that I just stand as long as I can stand, even if I feel like I'm going to die. It's just me. I'm just not telling you to do that. But in other words, I would have an easier time going to a doctor if I fell down a stair and broke my leg and letting them mend it or set it and believe in God will cause it to restore and be okay versus something that I felt a demonic presence, got threatened by a demonic voice, and then the sickness showed up or something. That's what happened with the witchcraft thing, just so you understand. An evil presence came into my bedroom, made itself very known. Didn't scare me at all. It was so cool when it came in my room. Guess what happened? I was so aware how born again I was. It was so fun. (laughs) When it was standing there, I was like, I am so saved. I am so not what that thing is. It was so dirty and so bleh, and I am just clean and righteous. And I was like, yay, I'm born again. So it wasn't like, oh, my God, a devil. (sighs) Okay? So when you tie witchcraft into the demonic coming at you, um, I'm just thinking, like, when when I think of witchcraft, I think of the devil working through people to do certain things, whether they're white. Well, it was people, it was people, uh, uh, you know what voodoo is, right? So there's, they, they take a target and they begin to curse and do certain things. And, and I'm like, and there was somebody coming to services that was involved in that kind of thing in the community. So there was a lot of fear starting to generate. And some people said, do you know? And they were coming on Sunday nights, sitting in the back. Do you know that that, who that is? Do you know what they do? Do you know? And I'm like, it doesn't matter. What was, man, I'm glad they're here. They can hear the gospel. And, and there was some fear generated. And isn't it funny? I'm here to, trying to tone down the fear and somehow don't have answers for this. It's irrelevant to me. It doesn't even matter. Somehow this stuff had the ability to touch me. Now you can, you can get all caught up in the theology of that and say, well, it shouldn't have been able to touch you, brother. You should be in the bubble of God. You should be da, 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 da. I, I, I would like that. I didn't do anything that I know. I can't be backing up wondering what door I opened. Now that it's come, I need to fight, not introspect. I'm not condemned man. I'm a loved man. And what we do 99.999% of the time is introspect. And we don't even fight. So what I'm talking about is people, curse stuff, targeting releasing demonic spirits, stuff like that. They were doing whatever they do. God help them, right? When that thing, when that thing left me know that it was rooted in the demonic, that it was an absolute, in fact, it spoke to me in the bedroom. It said, I've come to put sickness in your leg and you will lose your leg. That's what I heard. Now the fight's on because now I know its source, I know where it's coming from, and I know Jesus is Lord. So that's why you're not even, you're not even, you're not even going to get me to think 911. You see what I mean? Because I understand it's straight up demonic. It's not just whatever. 
So that's what I'm talking about, just so you understand, because I'm not against doctors at all, at all. So can I afford, can I afford to love my own life in that situation? If I look to what I'm going through, if I wake up in the morning like I did, and I have zero use of my, my leg, zero. I have zero in the morning, zero use of my leg. Now, I sat there as bold as could be. I wasn't one bit afraid of that demonic presence. The Spirit of God in me was, was very prevalent. It was awesome. When he left my room and I went to sleep, I'm like, you know, devils. Went to bed, woke up, had no use of my leg. That's where you find out what you really believe. Because it's not a method. It's not a declaration. It's a place you live from. Because what would happen in a lot of cases when you say the right thing the night before and wake up and have the wrong expression? So you wake up and your leg is totally useless. It's like it's not even there, but it's there. You think about the many responses that people have. Oh my God, how could this still, how can it touch me? What did I, I said it couldn't, listen, how come it could? God, why aren't you protecting me? Where, what did I do wrong? God, how come I'm going through this? What are you trying to teach? And the list goes on and on of how we respond. You say, how'd you respond? I just stood up and smiled like every other morning. Drugged my leg out of bed, flopped it on the floor, and I stood on one leg. Father, I honor you and worship you and thank you. Nothing changes who you are and who you are in me. And I honor you, you are greater. Drug myself to the bathroom. The reason I say it was demonic and witchcraft is because I got in the bathroom and that same presence came into my bathroom. I don't like that. I wish it would never come to my bathroom. I don't, still don't know how it could just show up in my bathroom and seem as arrogant as it did. <laughs> You're tempted to feel like a man feels towards a man he doesn't like growing up outside of Jesus. You just want to punch the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's in my bathroom. You can't see it. You can feel it. Yeah. I, I got real lightheaded. I felt like I was going to pass out in the bathroom. And I heard this voice say, hmm, maybe I'll give you a stroke instead. That's exactly what I heard. And I have all the feelings of passing out. I got like crazy feelings like I've never felt. And I sat on the bathtub. And I said, Lord, I have no clue, just pleaded ignorant, I have no clue what's going on, but I'm not afraid, and I know you're Lord, and I am done talking to this devil, I ain't hold no conversation with it. You are Lord, and I thank you for loving me, and ah, that's all I know. My wife found me at the doorway with my head against the wall. She said I was thin, looking in my face, white. She said I looked like I was dead. And I'm just waiting there. She said, I looked like I was dead, and I looked like I was passed out. She came into the bathroom, and I'm leaning there at the door. She couldn't get in. She said, I'm just leaning this way with my forehead against the wall, and I'm out cold. And she said, I don't even remember this. She said, she said, honey, honey, are you okay? She said, I smiled. <laughs> Good thing. She said, I smiled and said, oh, honey, I'm fine. See, it's just drilled in me. Very, you have no idea how militant I am in my heart. Like, I really believe I don't love my own life. I really do believe I'm not afraid. Because I've been through a few things that taught me that. I feel really humbled right now and just thankful. Because it's why we win. God gives grace to the humble and the fearless. And she said, I smiled and said, oh, yeah, I'm fine, honey. She said, well, what's wrong? And, and I said, oh, it's just the devil. You know he's a liar. You know Jesus is Lord. It's like she said, I was just preaching the gospel. <laughs> she said, well, let me help you to the couch. And when she helped me to the couch, I couldn't walk. She says, there's something wrong with your leg. Oh, it's just another one of those lies, Kimmy. And then I remember getting to the couch because the Spirit of God came on me. It was a pretty neat experience. But my leg stayed dead for 11 days. I don't want to make a theology out of this, but on the 11th morning, it, the chain broke off of me. I read in Revelations, Satan's coming to throw some of you in prison as many as 10 days. Stay steadfast in the faith. Don't be moved. 
<laughs> I don't want to give permission for sickness in my life ever, but what I'm saying is there's a principle there that you can embrace. Because you know what? Two days has a certain voice in your soul. Four days, when you're standing, when you believe you're doing everything, four days has a certain temptation. Six days, eight days, 10 days. There's a certain, you face certain temptations here and you hear a lot of things and friends say stuff they probably don't think before they say. And Follow me? And the whole 11 days is a trial. In the sense of there's, there's stuff that Satan is just trying to exploit, weaknesses, get you to feed into. You know, your mind works one day, way on the first day. Rah, stand. About the third day, fifth day, seventh day, you're, you're subject to a whole lot of things. If you're not locked and established. wonder if the 11th day is no different than the first wonder if. Are you all following me? Come on, it's called loving not your own life. We had a couple other hands though. Hang on, Jenny. We, 